Welcome to the worship services of Grace United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're glad you're here. We send out a special welcome to those of you who have joined us for our special service this morning in in-person worship as we return or attempt to return to some sense of normalcy as we baptize a beautiful baby into the membership of the church this morning. We thank all of you who have joined us for worship and a special thank you to those of you who have joined us over the internet. We will be Rebroadcasting this service at 11 o'clock, but it is live at 8.30. We're coming to you from 410 Harvestson Boulevard, in Columbia, South Carolina, and we are here to praise God. We welcome all who come to praise the risen Lord. Again, as we attempt to return to some sense of normalcy, we are continuing our communication efforts with the members of Grace. There is a daily newsletter that goes out with different emphasis for each day during the week. The pastor also does a devotion every weekday at 3 o'clock. That's available on the internet. And we have fellowship times that we are offering at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings and 6.30 on Wednesday evenings. I'm going to be telling you about some special services, excuse me, special services we're going to be having that are going to change those schedules just a little bit. But if you'd like to join us this morning, if you're watching us at 8.30, we will have fellowship this morning at 10 o'clock. And the instructions for how to join that go out in that newsletter that go out every, every morning. So if you're not getting those newsletters and you'd like to, if you call the church office or text the pastor or just let someone know, we'll make sure that we get you on that email list and you can receive the information about grace that goes out every day. If you have not contributed to the Epworth Children's Fund that we, we honored last week, there's still an opportunity. Our online giving page still has an entry for Epworth and you're welcome to continue giving to that if you didn't get a chance to last week. Today is a special day in the life of the church, as, again, as we welcome a beautiful baby who's staring at me right now <laughs> into the membership of the church, and we welcome the Love family and all who have come to praise God for that baptism. Next week, we'll be celebrating Pentecost, and our schedule is going to change just a little bit. We're going to have a 10 o'clock service, and it will be outside. So those of you who, have, who are listening to this broadcast and have not wanted to be inside for a service, we're going to be offering you a service next week at 10 o'clock outside. And following that, for every Sunday remaining in summer, we're going to have one service at 10 o'clock. The pastor will give you more information about this, but it will be an indoor service at 10 o'clock, except for some selected services that we will take outside. But starting week after next, we will have only the one service at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We celebrate birthdays today. We have, we have Amanda and Daryl celebrating birthdays this week, and a special anniversary congratulations goes out to the Copleys for this, their anniversary this week. Again, we wish you were here so we could ha sing happy birthday to you, but know that those days are coming. We're about to hopefully enter back into those times and we can joy joyously proclaim our birthdays every week. If there are no further announcements, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and our spirits for worship. Now, if you would turn and join with me in our call to worship, it's printed in your bulletin. It'll also be on the screen, and it's from Psalm 47, uh, which is our psalm for the day, this day. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. Amen. I want to say a special word of welcome and good morning to the children worshiping with us uh, this day. Um, we got one little one here this morning, and we're glad to have her for her baptism this morning. And uh, what I've brought for our children's sermon this day is actually this shell. Um, and I'm going to use this shell in a minute for our baptism as, as part of the baptism ceremony. And I've brought a shell because in the early church, uh, early on when the church was getting started, just a few uh, decades or even centuries after Jesus walked the earth, this, this kind of shell, a shell, became the symbol of baptism. 
in the church. It became the symbol of, uh, of the churches coming together to celebrate new Christians, new believers, new people being folded into the family of God. Um, and it would of, often be depicted having water dripping off of it, and they would use the shell to scoop up water to pour it onto people's heads to use it in the baptism um, ceremony, just like what we're going to do in a little bit. And part of what makes baptism so special, and um, we know that it stretches all the way back uh, to those earliest days because Jesus tells us that we're supposed to be baptizing in his name to bring people into the church. But part of what makes it so special is that when we baptize a uh, child or an adult or anybody, what we're remembering and what we're recognizing is that baptism is about what God is doing. Baptism is ultimately and always about what God has done in that person's life and in our life as the church. Baptism is God's action. And God doesn't make mistakes. God does that baptism and God is thorough and complete. And so when we come to the waters of baptism, we know that we uh, die with Christ. We die to our sin so that we can be raised to new life in grace with Jesus. And so uh, this morning we're excited to celebrate Ocean's baptism um, and to get to witness God work in her life uh, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness with the waters of of baptism, uh, and we're actually going to do that right now. And so I'm going to come down here to the baptism font, baptismal font, uh, and I'm bringing my shell with me. And I'm going to ask uh, Angel and Ocean to come and join me for a minute, and then we'll have some other folks come and join us here in a little bit. But um, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present Ocean Angelina Love for baptism. Now, Angel, I'm going to ask you a few questions on behalf of the church. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with Christ, the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you nurture ocean in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself? to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, answer, I will. I will. Now, congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Ocean with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. And now let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty. Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will we'll come, come again, again to, to judge, judge the, the living and the, and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Are there other family members you want to have join us for the baptism at this point. If y'all want to come on up, you can surround us up here either side of the baptismal font. Um, you're welcome to come on up. 
Uh, and as we enter the time where we uh, prepare for this baptism, we're going to be praying a prayer that's the thanksgiving over the water. And I just want to say a word about the water. The water this morning, we've got water from uh, grandmother's houses, great-grandmother's houses. We've got water from uh, York and Columbia, and we've got water from the church. Um, and so we have, we've got the waters of family, the waters of faith, uh, and they're coming together. And, and they're just, it's just regular water, all of it. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, it'll be the water of baptism uh, as we join in this prayer of thanksgiving and as we join in this celebration of baptism this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing, Sing to the Lord all the earth. earth. Tell of God's, God's mercy each, each day. day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus... Nurtured in the water of a womb, he baptized, was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ she may share in Christ's final victory. All, All praise, praise to you, you Eternal, Eternal Father, Father, through, through your, your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ who with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit lives and, and reigns, reigns forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Miss Ocean, will you come see me? Let's find out. What do you think? All right. Hello, hello. Good morning. Ocean Angelina, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit work within you, being born through water in the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I know. Look, this is your church. Some of them sitting out right out here. It's kind of hard. I know it's hard for me too, but some of them are through that little black camera up there, that lens. Uh, where Mr. Michael is. That's it. Out there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And some of them are back here too. And now we're going to welcome you, okay? So now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by, by the Holy Spirit, Spirit into, into God's, God's new creation, creation and, and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen. Here you go. Members of the household of God, I commend this person to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give, we give thanks, thanks for all that God has already, already given you. you. And we, we welcome, welcome you in Christian, Christian love. As, as members together with you in the body of Christ, Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, Church we, we renew our covenant, covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And the God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. We're excited uh, this morning to celebrate this baptism uh, and to have seen God's grace at work in Ocean's life. Right, yeah, be seated. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. 
Having gotten to celebrate already this morning with the baptism, we have more opportunity for those who are present uh, to have a little refreshment after the service and celebration of the baptism. You're invited to uh, hang around to greet um, Ocean and, and all of her family this morning on this occasion of her baptism. And so we uh, invite you to participate that way uh, after the service. And um, if you have prayer concerns that you'd like to share with the church either in worship or through the prayer concerns list in the bulletin or our prayer email. You can email me at pastor at gracecolumbia.org. You can call or text me with your prayer concerns as well. Um, and that prayer email for the church does go out on Thursdays. It includes our prayers from the Sunday prior, uh, as well as a host of other prayer resources that help us stay connected to one another and to God in prayer as a church. And now let us pray. Called to proclaim repentance... We are reluctant to look at our own failings. Invited to witness to God's loving forgiveness of sins, we would rather not speak aloud of our own. Let us trust in the one who offers us hope and healing as we pray. God, you call us to proclaim a gospel we find difficult to practice. God most high, we watch our clocks and make sure we spend more time with ourselves than with you. We're hesitant to witness to your power from on high as we're uncertain of your presence in our lives. Forgive us, God, of light. Fill us with the healing presence of your spirit that we may proclaim your good news as we participate in the life and suffering of our world, as did your Son, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. And this morning, we pray for our neighbors and our friends, our community, and we pray especially for Peter, Flora, Marion, and Jeanette, for Joyce Sweeney and Daryl, for all those suffering from other ailments for whom treatment is more difficult and dangerous, for all those who are grieving, for Bianca Seeger, for Ralph Neal, for Doris Bailey, for Janice O'Kane, for Susan Floyd as she had surgery last Friday, for Phil Gwynn as he is recovering at home from surgery and uh, from hospitalization, for, for Bernard Presley as he recovers from surgery, for J.D. Trake as he continues healing and recovering at home. For Violet Casper, for Jackie Daniel, for Matt Shinsky, George and Helena Fox's grandson who was recently diagnosed with diabetic retinopathy. For Mike, a friend of Kurt Van Gelder who had bypass surgery last week and is now awaiting a kidney transplant. For Sue and Kevin Marsh, for Doris Waddell, John Waddell's mother, for Gloria's half-brother Marvin, for Casey Doidge and Josh Furr who are currently deployed overseas, for Alex Libby, who's at basic training in the Army. For Rashad Page, who graduated with his MBA last week. For Kathy Murphy, who was recognized for her years of outstanding service as a teacher at Chapin High School last week. We want to say congratulations and praise and honor to you, O oh Lord, for Aaron and Michael on the occasion of their wedding. For the concerns and prayers on Angus's heart. For all health care workers, our veterans and VA staff. For all the members of Grace and their families, and for the leadership of Grace as we navigate the lawsuit against Grace using the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. For all those on our prayer concerns list, and for those prayer concerns that go unspoken on our hearts this day. Choosing to set aside judgment, God gives us justice. Choosing to let go of punishment, God fills us with peace. Choosing to release anger, God's steadfast love rests upon us. Forgiven, redeemed, restored, we will tell everyone through the lives we lead what God has done for us. Thanks be to God. And now we pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we uh, prepare to hear our scripture lesson as we join uh, in the hymn, He is Exalted. It's from the faith we sing. <laughs> He is exalted, the King is exalted. 
today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not too many days from now. So when, you had, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. You may be seated. As I was listening to the scripture be read this morning as it began, I I got a little jealous of Luke. Um, the gospel writer, you know, Luke wrote uh, the gospel of Luke, but we also um, know that Luke wrote uh, the book of Acts, and and he gets to start out the book of Acts with just, remember everything I told you before, Theophilus? I I, I, Sometimes I want to just be able to say that and trust that everybody's going to remember what I said before, but I don't think that that's the way that works often. Um, But I just got a little jealous there for a second. Um, But This morning, uh, as we think about this passage uh, of Scripture, it's Ascension Sunday. Um, It's the Sunday when we remember that Christ uh, was not only raised from the dead, but God lifted Christ up to be seated at the right hand of the Father um, some 40 days after the resurrection. And as we think about that, as we think about what it means for Christ to sit at the right hand of the Father, what it means for us as Christians to serve a risen and ascended Savior, the risen and ascended Son of God, it it occurs to me that we also have an opportunity to think about all of that in light of what we hope will be a return to some kind of semblance of new normal here in the coming months uh, as we find out more and more about what the vaccine means and its efficacy as more and more people hopefully continue to get it. And so as we prepare 
to find that post-pandemic normal as we prepare for 10 o'clock worship here at Grace as we've already started to change our order of service to better fit our new practices uh, I want to take a few minutes and remind us of a few truths we need to remember. And, and these truths are connected to our scripture this morning. They're not just my rambling thoughts, I promise. Um, well, maybe a little of both. Um, we'll find out. First thing I want us to think about and remember is that attending church, coming Attending church, whether in person or online, however you choose to attend, attending church does not make you a good Christian. It's the first thing I want us to remember. Showing up doesn't make you a good Christian. Over the years, the church fell into a bad habit. These are the years before the pandemic. Over the years, and you can calculate the number of years. I'm not getting into that today. Over the years, the church fell into the bad habit of seeing showing up as being the end-all, be-all of church membership. And by extension, discipleship of Jesus. Showing up became the bar set way too low. We stopped asking whether or not we're being faithful to Jesus and settled for whether or not we were present on Sunday. This meant that the best church members were those who were willing to be present, even if their life didn't give evidence of faithfulness to the way of discipleship. But they're there all the time. Our passage this morning helps to get a handle on this because it shows us that from the beginning of the church, we as disciples confuse watching Jesus with following Jesus. On the day when Jesus ascended to the Father, we hear from Luke, twice actually, at the end of the Gospel of Luke and then again at the beginning of Acts that we heard this morning. We hear that the disciples were content to stand with their necks craned up watching where Jesus had been, staring into the sky. When I'm looking up like this, I can't see any of you people. I don't know what you're doing. They're content to stand there gazing up, and then they have to be snapped out of it by some divine messengers. God, they, they've just been standing in the presence of the risen Savior. They've watched him go into heaven, and in order to get their attention, again, God has to send some angels to them, some divine messengers to go, hey, what are you looking at? There's nothing there. Jesus has gone up to heaven. He'll come back one day the same way he just came. But for now, you've got work to do. Get busy. These disciples are present at the ascension, but they've quickly forgotten the 40 days of instruction they just had with Jesus where he laid out the down-to-earth ministry that he was calling them to. That's what Luke tells us Jesus does for those 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension. He teaches the disciples. They get a Ph.D. with Jesus. A concentrated, advanced degree in what they're supposed to do and what the mission was in the kingdom of God. And yet they, like us, find themselves standing, watching Jesus, or at least where he used to be. They were content to stand there watching, passively waiting instead of following Jesus into ministry as they actively waited on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There's a difference. We'll, we'll use that whole, well, we're waiting. There's a difference between passively waiting and actively waiting on Jesus. Jesus tells us some things we can do to actively wait. When we passively wait, we don't do any of those things. We just use it as an excuse to do nothing. 
For us, this proclivity to stand around watching Jesus gets brought forward into the present every time we settle for showing up as a sign of discipleship instead of faithfulness. Don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody here or anybody watching on there, online, to uh, confuse what I'm saying this morning. I am not saying that presence isn't important. I'm not saying that presence isn't important. I'm going to say it again. I am not saying that presence isn't important. We just promised just a second ago the same promise that all of us made when we joined the church, the same promise all of us have made every time somebody has come to be baptized, child, adult, tween, teen, doesn't matter, whoever comes for baptism, we have reaffirmed our promise to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. All of them are important. Presence is important. Our presence together in worship, in fellowship, and study is vital to our faith and discipleship. But this is where we get confused. I know I've already confused you. Just told you the problem was we we just want to rely on showing up. Now I'm telling you showing up is important, but here's where we get confused. Presence is vital to our faith and discipleship as the means to an end, not as the end itself. Presence is a means to an end. It is not the end itself. The end that you and I are striving for, the end that we are striving for together as a church is faithfulness, holiness, and sanctification, among other things. But those three cover most everything we want to do together. That's the end that we're striving for in our discipleship and in our faith. We want to be faithful, we want to be sanctified, and we want to become holy as Christ is holy. That is the end that we're working towards, and presence is a means to that end. You can't get to faithfulness, holiness, and sanctification if you never show up to church. If you never show up to mission opportunities, if you never show up to any Bible studies, if you never show up to anything at all, you're not going to become faithful, holy, or sanctified just out of nothing. Presence is important. We attend church We join in studies and small groups. We participate in fellowship and connection. We join in mission and ministry in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We come and do all those things as the means that God has given us for engaging with the grace of God. It puts us in connection with the grace that God has for us. That's why in the Methodist church, we call them the means of grace probably should mean something to us at grace. Presence is one of those means of grace when we worship and fellowship, when we study together, online or in person. We put ourselves in the position to experience the grace of God, but it is a means to an end and not the end in and of itself. And there are some clear indicators of when we have our means and ends straightened out. There's some clear things we can look to. You see, if we see attendance as the goal, as the end of faith, if all that's important is that we show up, we will continue in an unrepentant, untransformed life that does not seem to be moving towards the likeness of Christ. It's a pretty clear indicator. We will be present, but unchanged. We'll be stuck in the cycles of sin and death from which Jesus wants to free us. But we've decided just aren't that appealing. That freedom is not that appealing. 
If we see showing up in mission and ministry as a means of grace by which we can encounter God and God's transforming love, then we will begin to see that transformation bear fruit in how we think, speak, and act. See, when showing up is a means instead of an end, transformation takes place. And this leads me to the second thing I want us to remember as we begin to get serious about our post-pandemic normal. Whatever that's going to look like, I still don't know. I wish I did. CDC keeps changing things. They don't, they don't think about what it does to churches at all. I'm going to tell you that much right announcing on a Thursday. That's not going to give me time to do anything. The second thing I want us to remember about this as we get serious about our post-pandemic normal, and this will apply no matter what it looks like, is that faithfulness is evidenced by our witness to the gospel in our relationships and interactions with other people and with all of creation. If we are being faithful, if faithfulness and holiness and sanctification are the ends we are striving for in faith, that will be evidenced by our witness to the gospel in our relationships and interactions with other people and with all of creation. There are plenty of folks who show up to church every time the doors open, who don't reflect the love and grace of Jesus in their life otherwise. They were before the pandemic, probably will be after. But church, we are at a point in the world where Everybody needs to see in us the love and grace and transformation of Jesus Christ. Where we can't afford to let showing up unchanged be our image in the world. The world doesn't need that. The world's got plenty of that. Plenty of unchanged, broken, sinful people. What they need to see is changed, broken, and sinful people in us. I'm not going to play like we're not going to still be broken and sinful. (laughs) I know better than that. What the world needs to see from us is changed and changing, broken and sinful people. Repentant people, confessing people, people committed to the transformation of God's grace. Following Jesus requires us to turn our eyes away from heaven and back to earth. It's not just about being present on Sunday morning and being inspired, hopefully, (laughs) by something that happens. It's not just about being present to celebrate the ascension. It's about committing to a life of prayer, accountability, hard conversations, sacrificial living, and difficult decisions in order to be transformed by the grace of God and bear faithful witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. We're not just watching Jesus here. We're following Jesus here. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Almighty God, we ask you to transform us.
We can't transform ourselves. We can put us in a put ourselves in a place where we might experience your grace where you have promised we will experience your grace if we attend faithfully to what you've asked of us we can show up but you bring the transformation help us to see our showing up our living out our faith our attending to the means of grace as just that means to become more holy become more Christ-like, to experience the sanctifying grace through Jesus Christ. Show us your will and your way. Amen. Now let's sing together. Y'all get to sing this one Uh, Along with us, those here in person and at home, let's sing together, all hail the power of Jesus' name. prepare to give back to God out of all that God has so graciously given to us. Uh, we have a, quite a few giving options here at Grace. We want to make sure you're aware of those. You can give online at gracecolumbia.org and you can use uh, uh, 
debit card, credit card, or a bank account transfer from that payment portal. And once you're on our website, you'll see the giving links uh, are on the menu bar at the top right-hand side of the page or on the navigation panel on the left-hand side of the page about midway down. If you're on a mobile device, if you click the little menu bars, the three bars at the top of the mobile page, you'll see an electronic giving link there under that menu tab. There's also a giving link at the bottom of that mobile homepage. Um, and from the mobile or from the giving page, you can set up an account to give with us and you can give a one-time gift or a recurring gift as an account holder in the online giving platform, or you can give as a guest and make a one-time gift. You can give to any of the mission or ministry funds that are listed there. Our general operating account, all of the other mission and ministry funds that are listed there uh, are available to, to be utilized right now, including the Epworth um, giving option if you haven't yet given an offering for Mother's Day to the Epworth Children's Home um, that, that we support, one of our United Methodist Ministries we support here in South Carolina. I encourage you to do that. Um, you can also mail us a check. You can bring a check by to the church office during office hours, or you can bring it your offering by and put it in the um, mailbox out in the parking lot if it's after office hours. And our address is 410 Harbison Boulevard, Columbia, South Carolina, 29212. Uh, we'd love to receive that offering that way. Um, and uh, if you are worshiping here this morning with us and didn't have a chance to place your offering in the offering plate as you arrived this morning, there are offering plates at either of the exits. And so we'd invite you to place your offering in one of those offering plates as you depart worship this day. Uh, we got, as Sam mentioned, uh, quite a few things coming up to celebrate. Um, we've got Pentecost Sunday next week. This is the birthday of the church. It's one of the ways that we talk about it, but it's when we remember the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit that we've been waiting on to come in power uh, and in grace since the resurrection that Jesus promises. We remember Pentecost uh, Day on Pentecost Sunday, and that's next week. We're going to be outside. I want to remind you, if you're coming in person uh, for our outdoor service, please plan to bring some chairs. We're going to be out front on the front lawn of the church this time. We're going to celebrate Pentecost out in front of our community um, and let folks see us worshiping and praising God together. And again, that'll be outside at 10 a.m. next week. Uh, and then on the 30th, May 30th, so the week after Pentecost, we're going to be inside at 10 a.m. This is our summer worship experiment. Um, and so we'll be worshiping inside at 10 a.m. Uh, or just doing all our worship at 10 a.m. starting May 30th. Um, and so we look forward to that and to um, experiencing 10 o'clock worship Together, we'll be online and in person at 10 a.m. For all of those who are worshiping online still and won't be with us in person, we'll be online at 10 a.m. live streaming our service on, uh, well, next week and then every week after. So uh, we look forward to worshiping with you then. Um, we do know that we had an update to the CDC mask guidance for vaccinated individuals. We're going to be looking into that. Uh, the church leadership will be uh, taking a look. I know that the, the conference team that has been providing some best practices is working on an update to those best practices in accordance with the CDC's guidance. Um, and so we uh, will take their best practices into account and then we'll have a plan for us on May 30th when we're back worshiping inside together. Um, and next week, since we'll be outside, uh, for those vaccinated individuals, if you want to come without a mask, come without a mask. Um, you might want to have one just in case. I don't know where you're going to go after church. They may still require it. I can't say. Um, but uh, with our outdoor service next week, um, if you are vaccinated, uh, know that as we'll be outside together, um, you can abide by that new CDC guideline for that outdoor worship service, and we'll have more information about our indoor practice coming soon. And now let's go to God in prayer. Loving God of both comfort and challenge, we've been blessed to know the feeling of being surrounded in your loving arms like a child. And we also know that it's not a place we can stay. You send us to be part of the world with all its ugliness, anger, hate, deceit, and betrayals but not of the world. You call us to give so that love, compassion, and hope might be set loose. 
We're not giving as those who are of the world expecting to receive in the transaction. We give instead out of gratitude for your loving heart made known to us in Christ. Use us in this way. We pray in the blessed name of Christ who by your love overcame death. Amen. Closing hymn this morning is Ask You What Great Thing I Know. Let's sing together. Our mission at Grace is to know Jesus and to make him known to others. Go down to the world ready to make Jesus known to others. Make Jesus known in your living, in your giving, in the transformation that has been wrought in you, in the change that God has done in you. Make Jesus known to others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.